Hi, welcome back to this video series on formal verification. Today I'm going to talk about verifying a Java program against its specification. So at a high level, this is the problem. You are given a program P, could be a sorting program or a search program, whatever. And you are also given some specification, say, um, yes, okay. So you have a program and a specification. The question is, um, are they equal to each other, okay? So I will show you an example uh, and verify the program against its specification um, using a tool, okay? So we will be looking into precondition, postcondition, invariance, and mechanically verify that uh, the program satisfies the specification. Okay, so let me get started with a simple array copy function that, that I will uh, use as an example, okay? So um, let me show you the example program. The example program is basically a simple copy array function. Simple functions are where people make mistakes, and especially when you deal with arrays and index, array out of index is such a frequently occurring mistake. So it's good to verify formally that the program works correctly for all possible inputs. Okay, so uh, this program is going to be verified now using a formal specification language. JML is a Java markup language where we will be specifying the behavior and then we will verify it mechanically against the behavior. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, copy array is a simple program, uh, which is going to transfer content from a given array B to, a, to another array A. So uh, we expect the program um, to just transfer the content from B to A, that's all, uh, at, a, at a high level. So we can precisely specify exactly what the program is going to do. Here's the specification. It says that for all possible int i, uh, where i begin is smaller than or equal to i, and i is less than i int, a of i equal to b of i. What it means is in plain English is basically that transferring the content from b of i to a of i, right? And i has to be, uh, of course, starting from i, uh, I begin, right? That's the argument i begin. And it, it cannot be including the i int, that's why you see a less than int, okay. That's, that's the, the contract this program is, is guaranteeing to its users. However, the program also expects some good behaviors from the users, okay? For example, uh, here we can see that the, the program expects both arrays to be of same length, and the array index better be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, the begin index is less than the length of the array. Similarly, the uh, I end, the end, the end index is also greater than or equal to zero, and it's less than the length, and the begin is smaller than or equal to length, uh, le is less than or equal to the end, okay. So this is the behavior um, the program expects the users to follow, and I will show you uh, how we can now mechanically verify this. So there's a little bit of a specification here. Um, let me quickly explain what it is. This is called loop invariant. Um, what it, it is helping us is to, to, to verify whether uh, the program will uh, sort of terminate correctly, and um, and uh, when the program terminates, this ensure condition will be satisfied. That's basically the overall goal. So um, let me explain the decreases a little bit later. Uh, let, let's continue now. So what are we achieving in every loop iteration? Okay, the program is supposed to transfer the content from b of k to uh, b from b to array a, right? That's basically the reason why b of k gets copied into a of k this portion of the line, okay? The content from array B is copied to array A, and then we increment the index K until uh, I end minus K is uh, um, uh, greater than or equal to zero, okay? So as soon as I end minus K is equal to zero, uh, the loop will terminate. At that moment, we have actually uh, copied all the uh, elements uh, from the I begin all the way until I end, not including I end. Right? That's what the specification said. All right, so uh, that's basically it. Um, so we can now verify um, what we achieve in each iteration and specify that um, as part of the loop invariant. Here is the loop invariant that says, uh, so far when the loop runs, uh, we copied a of, uh, b of i to a of i. You see here there's a loop uh, bound k, okay? What it, what it means is that we have copied the first um, k minus one elements so far. In each iteration, we copy one element, right? That's basically what this, this maintaining statement is trying to say. 
All right, so let's verify this now. Okay, we will run this. And it says your program appears to satisfy its specification, which is pretty good. But now, now let's do more. Um, let's, let's introduce uh, something. Let's introduce a, a public static void main function, right? And uh, let's call the copy array. So let's first create two arrays. Int a um, is equal to new int uh, safi elements, just for demo purpose, right? Uh, and then you have int um, b array is equal to new int five elements. And then we will copy array from uh, B to A. So we will copy from say zero to, yeah, this is basically what we are going to do. Okay, let's see what happens now if we run it. The program is now being verified formally. So it says the program appears to satisfy a specification. Okay, so let's make some mistakes. What if I declare my array B to be of size four, right? Let's see what happens now. Okay, very nice. The prover cannot establish an assertion. The precondition is not checked. So the precondition says the length of the array must be same, but we violated it. Okay, that's good, good mistake. And it, and it is directing it. So these kinds of mistakes happen in the, in the practice and we are able to verify it mechanically. So let's make more mistakes. What if I put um, my index to be uh, uh, five here? Okay, these are all mistakes people make all the time. Uh, I have made it many, many times. So, okay, yes, it says precondition is violated. The reason is that um, you can see here it says precondition violated. Um, we are cop array copy. Ah, it's pointing us to copy array function. And uh, it is clearly pointing us to the place where it's violated. It says i end less than a dot length. So, so we violated the length. Uh, limitation, right? We exceeded the limit, right? I end uh, is five. Five is not uh, um, uh, less than a dot length, right? A dot length is also five. Five should not be allowed. Uh, let's get to back to four and let's put minus one for a moment and see what happens. It should hopefully direct that mistake as well. Yes, it does. And it's clearly pointing us to the area where we are making mistake, right? It says zero less than I begin is violated. So, as you can see, the mistakes that we make are, are formally verified and pointed out uh, where, where we are making mistakes. Okay, so basically the requires is, is very strong. It's, it's basically checking against uh, all the usages of the method and make sure uh, our, our uh, function is properly used. The copy array is properly used in all places. Okay, that's the purpose of the requires. So now let's make some mistakes inside the um, while loop, say for, um, I will explain the reason for this for a moment. Okay, let me cut this thing out. So what happens now? Let me also make one more mistake. Let's not increment it and see whether uh, we can do something about it. Okay, so this is weird, right? The program says um, your program appears to satisfy its specification, which is clearly wrong because our loop um, is infinite loop, right? We, we uh, we are not uh, terminating it. We are not decreasing the value of k. So, so the tool doesn't really cannot uh, predict whether the while loops terminate for all possibilities. Therefore, we need to help the tool. Otherwise, this verification is flawed. So that's the reason why we need to introduce a decrease decreases um, as part of the specification. We say i int minus k decreases. The distance between i int and k decreases. Uh, that means that at some point it will reach zero. That's what we are trying to say to the tool. Okay, and now we should be able to, uh, yeah, you see here the program appears to satisfy specification. So now let's say what happens if I just uh, forget the uh, um, increment. Okay, so hopefully the tool will catch us. Okay, yes, it does. You see here the prover cannot establish an assertion. Um, we violating this assertion. Okay, so. That's basically the idea of the decreases. It's helping to uh, um, decide uh, whether the loop will terminate or not, okay? All right, so um, let's make some more mistakes. So what if I make a mistake like this? This is another mistake we make all the time. Yep, the prover cannot establish assertion. So which part of the, yeah, you see here it pointing us to the line PK minus one. It's clearly pointing us to this, this 
this portion of the code that's that's why writing and it is also pointing us to the fact that the loop invariant is not maintained because we said uh, at any moment we have successfully copied uh, um, b of i to a of i for all i less than k right that's what that's what we, we are claiming but we are actually not doing that we are copying from k minus one so that that's pretty neat um, once you have the spec you can formally verify of course so um, let, let's make one more mistake let us make a mistake here greater than or equal to okay so again we violated a loop invariant and it is detecting us saying that uh, the prover cannot establish the loop invariant so this is good so we need to be careful that this is wrong so we fix this okay what what can go wrong let's make some more mistakes here what if i put at this point to say uh, minus okay i think this this is a little off uh, maybe i put six here what happens it will detect it hopefully yep it detected it and it clearly pointed to the portion that we violated that's exactly nice uh, very nice and uh, um, that's let's make some more mistakes <laughs> okay what if i i put five here and a zero here okay yeah that's that's again violation we made mistakes so it's it's clearly detecting every little mistake that we, we make in our regular day-to-day -day work okay so it's basically from zero all the way to index five not including five right let's see what happens now okay we have to have length less than a dot length zero to four okay and uh, what is going to do is it's going to transfer zero one two and three because it, it says clearly i has to be less than i end okay so this is this is very nice that is able to copy content of array from uh, uh, one array to another array that simple part of course but the, the more appealing part to me is to be able to precisely specify the, the behavior and the mechanically verifying the behavior of course the challenge is to to specify um, the the invariant and the termination part carefully and clearly but i will talk about that in my program synthesis series how to uh, even automate some of those uh, specification tasks okay uh, with that i'm actually wrapping up thank you very much for your